Hello friends, Kip Forest here. And this is the engine walkthrough of Ferrum. Let's start with one of the main features, the step sequencer. This is how the step sequencer looks when initialized. It's not engaged, so if we play a note, nothing happens. To turn the step sequencer on, we should push this power button. Now it's working. And now we can create a pattern or a sequence. Let's start with something simple. Let's make it a little bit faster. We can adjust the length of the steps or notes with the help of the frequency knob. Let's try the 16th notes. Let's go ahead and make our pattern a bit more interesting. To make the sequence longer, we can adjust the amount of steps here and draw the rest of the sequence. Let's add a little bit of complexity. We can divide each step into up to 8 sub-steps. It helps to create diverse and interesting patterns. When we hold multiple notes, all of them are played simultaneously in the Play All mode, which is the default one. We will look at other modes in a minute. We can humanize the pattern by adding a natural delay to each layer. It creates an ensemble effect and a more natural sound of the sequence. Besides from the main tab that controls the velocity of the steps, we have also tabs for panning, filter and pitch. Let's try and draw in some panning. Maybe a little bit less aggressive. Let's come up with something for the filter. And let's try something with the pitch. If we want to bypass some tabs, we just need to click their respective power buttons. We can also adjust the BPM multiplier with the tempo knob. When 
searching for new ideas, you can simply randomize the tabs. It allows to quickly find an interesting new idea that you can further develop into your own. The Step Sequencer in Ferrum comes with a huge list of over a thousand pre-saved rhythms of many different categories. Let's check them out. We can also just pick a random rhythm from the list. Let's pick another one. We can also construct a random rhythm from the parts of the existing ones. You can also filter the rhythms by categories, for example if you want to see only the action ones. There are multiple playback modes available for the step sequencer. The default one is called Play All. In this mode, all of the pressed notes are played together in each step of the sequencer. Let's first hear the separate notes. Now let's press them all together. So the play all mode plays all the pressed notes simultaneously. The next mode is called arpeggio ascending. It plays the pressed notes one by one from the left to the right one. Arpeggio descending plays the notes one by one from right to left. And arpeggio order plays the notes in order in which they had been pressed.
advanced mode allows us to control exactly which of the pressed notes are going to be played at each step of the sequence. To clear a step, we can press that little C button. And last but not least, there is the key sequence mode. In this mode, each step can have its own note, which will be played regardless of what is pressed at the moment. The key sequence can be randomized. We can randomize only the keys and keep the sequence that we like. Or we can keep the notes and only change the sequence, although it may introduce some new notes. Let's try a longer sequence as an example. The active button disengages the sequence, and we can hear the notes we are pressing. It really helps when we are choosing the notes for our sequence. Let's turn it back on. And now, no matter which notes we press, we will hear our sequence. If we want to use only a part of the sequence, we can choose it with the timeline markers over here. The step sequencer plays only what is between these markers. If we want to, we can keep only the part of sequence that is between the markers and get rid of the rest with the crop button. The host grid button allows you to synchronize the start of your sequence in the step sequencer with the grid of your workstation. It is very convenient if you want to use only the ending of the sequence. The Get MIDI function is one of the key features of Verum. It is available only in full version.
you can save your pattern as a MIDI sequence with the Get MIDI button. Now you can drag and drop your sequence as a MIDI part into your DAW. This is how the MIDI is going to look like. The rhythms you create can be saved. They will appear in the Rhythms menu under the User category. To save our rhythm, we press Save over here. We write the name of our rhythm. And press OK. Now our rhythm is on the list. And you can load it into the sequencer at any moment. If we wish to delete our rhythm, we just need to press this icon. Press OK. In the center of the main tab, we have a handy real-time stage placement interface. We can easily move our sound in 3D space here, adjusting multiple parameters at once. This interface makes placing the instruments across your virtual stage very easy. We can also adjust the microphone balance manually. Doing this will automatically engage the fixed sound mode. In this mode, the microphone balance is fixed and is not controlled by the stage placement interface. If we turn it off, the microphone balance will automatically adjust accordingly to the stage placement. In Ferrum you have the following controls for each microphone. The volume fader. The envelope of each microphone can be adjusted separately here. The stereo width of the microphones can be controlled here. Solo, mute, and the power button. When off, it purges the microphone, removing it from the memory. The reverb can be adjusted separately as well. You can also choose different impulse responses for the reverb. In Ferrum, we have different playback modes to work with. The first one is Mono. The next one is Stereo. We can adjust the width of the sound, and if we go to zero, we are switched to Mono. And vice versa. The third playback mode is Doubling. It introduces a delay between the left and right channels playback. This fader controls the amount of the delay between the channels. We can also choose to have a fixed direction of the delay from right to left or from left to right. Or we can keep it random. 
the width fader controls the stereo placement of the channels. The ensemble mode plays back from 3 to 16 layers after a note is pressed. We can control how they are spread in time. And in stereo field. The ensemble also has advanced settings. Here we can set the amount of random layers. The percentage means how many of the layers are randomly going to be played or not played after a note is pressed. The volume range fader controls the volume diversity between the layers. The volume decrease fader controls how much the volume of the ensemble drops when the amount of layers increases. The detune chance and the tune rage faders help us to achieve a more natural sound by introducing a little pitch difference between the layers, so that they all sound a little different. In that case, 50% of the layers have a chance to be pitched inside this range. The random attacks fader introduces a fade-in into the set amount of layers that is controlled here. That way we can make the layers differ even more, making their overall sound even more natural. The velocity curve control allows us to translate the incoming velocities into other velocities accordingly to the chosen function. Let's get a rhythm going to demonstrate. The velocity curve control is present both on the main and the rhythm tabs. Different functions are available. The ADSR module allows us to control the envelope of the sound. It can be applied to each note separately or to all notes at once if the global button is on.
And just like with velocity curve, the ADSR envelope is duplicated across the main tab and the rhythm tab. The global button determines whether the ADSR should affect all notes at once or each note separately. When the retrigger button is on, each round robin will stop the playback of the previous one of the same note. At the bottom of the main page, you will find the round robins module. Each of the squares represents a round robin of the last pressed note. It also highlights the round robins that are currently played. As you can see, this note has seven round robins. We can turn some of them off if we want to. and we can turn them back on. In Ferrum there is an effects rack with 7 slots available. Each of the slots can be used to load one of the available effects. There are also some presets available. So let's try out some effects. We can bypass the effect here. Here we can access the individual presets of the effect. It is very easy to switch between effects. We can also change their order in the chain with the help of these arrows. To remove an effect, we can simply press the close button inside the square. So let's say you have your own custom effects chain that you would like to save. For this, you just need to press the save button over here. It is now saved. You can now load your preset by pressing the load button and finding the save file of your effects chain. Thanks for watching.